Hi, I'm Sandy from the Home Depot Rental Center. When you need to tackle tough jobs in tight spaces, we offer the Kubota U17 Mini Excavator. It features maximum digging performance and can dig to depths of up to seven and a half feet. Additionally, it has a two-speed travel switch, allowing you to maneuver around your job site more quickly than ever before. Now, before operating the excavator, make sure to read and understand all operating and safety instructions found in the operator's manual as well as posted on the unit. Check that the rollover protective structure, or ROPS, is securely in place before using the excavator. Always operate the unit in compliance with all local, state, and federal regulations, including OSHA regulations. As with the operation of any power equipment, you must wear the proper safety gear. Do not wear loose-fitting clothing, jewelry, or anything that could become caught in the machine during operation. When operating, be sure to wear personal protective equipment, such as a hard hat, safety shoes, hearing and eye protection, and work gloves as appropriate, and as required by your job site. Always determine the location of utilities before digging. Be sure to call 811 and complete a survey of the site. Buried electric cables and gas lines can cause serious injury or death. Only operate the machine in a well-ventilated area. Engine exhaust contains carbon monoxide, which is extremely hazardous. And of course, keep away from electric power lines. Make sure the hitch on the towing vehicle is the appropriate size to fit the trailer. Never leave the machine unattended with the engine running. It's important to always operate the excavator at standard track width. Only use the narrow width when passing through tight spaces, and never use the narrow width on uneven surfaces. When operating the machine on slopes, use caution and move at a slow rate of speed. When traveling forward or backward with the tracks going in the direction of the slope, make sure the slope is no greater than 15 degrees. When traveling with the track sideways or perpendicular to the slope, the slope should not exceed 10 degrees. Make sure to perform regular maintenance on the unit. Talk with your rental associate or refer to the operator's manual for more information on maintenance. It's important to familiarize yourself with the controls of the machine before operating. The red hydraulic lever is located on the left side of the control panel. When starting the machine, make sure it is disengaged in the up position. Once the machine has started, push it down to be able to use the hydraulic arm of the excavator. The excavator features a two-pattern selection system. For the purposes of this video, the controls will be shown under pattern B. To operate with this pattern, make sure the pattern selection lever under the left floorboard is in pattern B. Consult the operator's manual for more information on switching between operating patterns. In pattern B, the right attachment control lever operates the boom and the bucket. Push it forward to move the boom down and pull it back to raise the boom. Move the lever to the left to dig with the bucket and move it right to dump. The red swivel lock pin located on the floorboard must be disengaged before you can use the attachment lever to swivel the upper structure. Move the attachment lever left to swivel the upper structure left and right to swivel the upper structure to the right. In pattern A, the right lever would operate the arm and the bucket and the left would operate the boom and the swivel of the upper structure. Be sure to consult the manual and talk with your rental associate for more information. The boom swing is controlled by the boom swing pedal near your right foot. Step on the left side of the pedal to swing the boom to the left and on the right side to swing the boom to the right. The throttle lever is located on the right side of the operator's seat. Push the throttle forward to run and pull it back to idle. The track width change dozer select lever is located on the right side of the seat. To change the width of the track, pull this lever up. Then, pull back on the track width control lever to decrease the width and push it forward to increase the width. When you wish to operate the dozer, push the track width change dozer select lever down. 
the dozer control lever is the same as the track width lever. Pull it back to raise the dozer and push it forward to lower. To adjust the dozer from narrow to standard width, remove the fixing pins. Fold each extension dozer outward and set it with a pin. Reverse the procedure when changing from standard to narrow width. For greatest stability, operate the machine with the tracks in the widest position and the dozer blade set at standard width. The travel speed switch is located on the top of the dozer control track width lever. Press the switch down to change from first to second speed. Press it down again to change back from second to first. The drive levers are located in the center of the control panel and control the movement of the machine. The fuel tank is located on the right side of the machine. You will need to use the key to access the fuel tank. Always perform a thorough walk-around inspection before using the machine. Investigate any job site prior to operation and take necessary measures to eliminate or reduce any hazard. The first thing you'll want to do is remove the tie downs and put the ramps securely in the down position. Face the machine and enter using three points of contact. Make sure to fasten the seat belt securely over your lap. Ensure the hydraulic lever is disengaged in the up position. The engine will not start when the hydraulic lever is not in place. Turn the starter key to run, then to start. Release it after the engine has started it will automatically return to the run position. Ensure all warning lamps have gone off. If a lamp stays on, turn off the engine and consult the operator's manual to help diagnose the problem. Now you can engage the hydraulic lever. When unloading the excavator from a trailer, make sure that the towing vehicle is parked on level ground. Ensure that the trailer is securely attached to the towing vehicle. Always make sure the ROPS is securely in place and the seat belt is securely fastened before operating the machine. Ensure the ramp is clear of any materials that may cause slippage and align the machine with the loading ramp. Disengage the swing lock pin and raise the dozer and bucket enough to clear the ramp. Pull the drive levers back and slowly ease the excavator off the trailer. Have another person act as a guide to help the machine operator back the unit down the ramps. This video will cover a few of the more basic operations of this machine. Talk to your rental associate and consult the owner's manual for more information on additional uses. To begin, push the throttle forward to increase the engine speed. Ensure the bucket and blade are raised above the ground. Push the drive levers forward to move the machine forward and pull them back to move in reverse. To steer left, push the right drive lever forward and pull the left lever back. Conversely, to steer right, push the left lever forward and pull the right lever back. Never operate the bucket while traveling. To stop the movement of the machine, return both the right and left travel levers to neutral. To start digging, make sure the blade is lowered to the ground. Now engage the arm cylinder. About halfway through the digging cycle, start the bucket curl while continuing to curl the arm in. Do not use downward pressure on the boom when you start to dig. This will lift the machine and move it out of alignment with the work. During your excavation, keep the teeth of the bucket parallel to the bottom of the excavation. Only use the arm and bucket while you dig. As the arm moves the bucket through the soil, curl the bucket to maintain its orientation. At the end of the pass, or when the bucket is full, curl the bucket completely, lift the bucket from the excavation, and swing the boom to the dump site. Keep the arm moving outward and start the boom swing as soon as the bucket clears the excavation. Continue extending the arm, and as you approach the spoil pile, then start to dump the bucket. Now, when the bucket is empty, the arm and the bucket are in position to resume digging. When using the dozer, keep the blade low to the ground. Drive slowly to push the material in the direction you're traveling. Allow the unit to completely cool before cleaning. The muffler and engine get hot enough to cause serious burns. Once the unit has completely cooled, remove dirt and debris. 
use water to rinse off loose debris. Avoid directly spraying water into or onto the engine muffler, carburetor, and air cleaner areas. When loading the excavator on a trailer, make sure that the towing vehicle is parked on level ground. Ensure the trailer is securely attached to the towing vehicle and the vehicle's parking brake is engaged. Clear the ramp of any materials that may cause slippage and align the unit with the loading ramp. Have another person act as a guide to help the machine operator drive the unit onto the trailer. Travel toward the ramp plates at low speed with the bucket lowered as close as possible to the deck of the trailer. Once you have loaded the excavator, lower the bucket and the dozer to the trailer. To turn the machine off, first move the throttle to idle. Allow the engine to idle for five minutes with no load. Now, disengage the hydraulic lever. Stop the engine by turning the starter key to off and remove the key. Engage the swivel lock pin and exit using three points of contact. Make sure to secure the unit to the trailer using the four-point tie-down system. Raise the ramps and secure them in the up position. For more information on large equipment rentals, visit your local Home Depot or homedepot.com rental.